Hello and welcome to the shop. A couple of months back on our podcast, you made that? I made a declaration that I was no longer going to use a roughing gouge for turning pins. I was going to exclusively use a skew. And this is the skew that I've been using. It's a three quarter inch Robert Sorby. I have really enjoyed using it. I still have a lot to learn on technique, but I'm getting some gorgeous cuts, making some beautiful pins. And I can tell you, since I started using this skew, the proper way, I have had no catches. At some point in the future, I'll do a video to teach you guys how I like to use the skew. But today's video is, I've got a lot of people saying, show us how you sharpen your skew. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I've been reluctant to do a sharpening video because there are so many purists out there who believe that there's only one way to sharpen a skew, one way to do anything. And I'm here to tell you, don't subscribe to that philosophy. They are not right. There are many ways to accomplish a task such as sharpening a tool. The main thing is, number one, safety. Number two, find a process that works for you and gives you an edge that you are satisfied with and gives you a gorgeous cut every time you use it. That's what I'm gonna show you today is my method. It's not the only method. It's probably not the right method, not the perfect method, but you know what? In my shop, it gives me a tool that works very well. I'm very comfortable and happy using, and maybe it'll give you a starting point so you can start sharpening your tools and find your own method that works well in your shop. The first thing that I like to do before I sharpen any tool is I'll take a Sharpie and I'll completely color in the, the bevel on the tool. Once your bevel is colored in, it's now time to turn our attention to finding the perfect angle on our sharpening system. Now let's talk a little bit about the sharpening system I use. This is a Rikon low speed grinder. That means it runs at 1,750 RPMs. I have a 200 grit CBN wheel and I'm using the Wolverine sharpening system from one way. Now, the proper way to find the angle or the bevel of your tool is to put your tool out here in the pocket. Now notice this, this is incorrect. See how this tool is at a, let's say 45 degree angle roughly from the wheel. You wanna flip it over. You want the tool to be square or at 90 degrees to the wheel. When we move it to the other pocket, we will rotate it set it in this pocket and then we can sand from this side. The way you find your angle is you set the tool in the pocket and you rotate the wheel and you'll find your angle. Now my angle is not exactly perfect. I'm right on the center of the tool and the reason why it's not perfect is I sharpened this tool quite a while back and I've been doing a lot of stropping so this is the angle I'm going to use. This is the angle I set it to last time I used it. We're going to go ahead now and sharpen the tool. We'll start by taking the tool away from the wheel, starting the grinder and letting it get up to speed. I'm going to lay the tool on the grinder, moving it back and forth just a tiny bit. Then I'm going to rotate it to the other side. I don't want to stay too long on one side because I don't want to build too much heat. I'm going to sharpen until all of the red is gone. And with that, I've removed all of the marker. My tool now has a perfectly, the same angle, a perfectly similar angle on both sides. I now have a really nice even edge on both sides of my tool and I can feel this side, the burr. So this was the last side that I sharpened. You'll feel it with your finger. What we want to do now is we're going to use a couple of, of card files and I'm going to work that burr back and forth until I actually can work it off of the tool. I'm going to use a little Windex. I found that Windex does a nice job as a stropping fluid. I'm just going to put a little bit on there and you're going to find the angle. And you're just going to hold the, the um, skew at that angle and you're going to work it in kind of a circular motion on the card file. You don't have to get in a hurry. This isn't a race. Don't try to you know, get super fast or anything. Just take your time. Work that angle. Flip it from one side to the other.
Now I can feel the burr much better now all the way down the side of the skew. I'm going to switch over. What, what, what that's doing is I'm moving the burr to this side. Then I flip it. I move it back to this side. I'm making a nice even burr. At some point, I guess in theory, the burr should work its way off. I generally work it to where I know that I have a nice burr from end to end. And then I use the strop to remove that burr. Let's put a little more Windex on our next file. I will find these files online and put a link to the Wolverine system, uh, the files, and the strop I'm about to use uh, in the description of this video. So if there's any of these tools you are interested in learning more about or taking a look at, possibly adding them to your tool collection, they will be in the description of this video. I can feel the burr from top to bottom of the tool. It's much finer than it was when I was uh, sharpening on the first, uh, the first of the two card files. Now we're going to take this tool over to the strop and we're going to strop it. I use my strop in my drill press and you can tell by how dirty it is. I've had this one for many years. I've stropped many tools on it. It's been a great addition to my toolbox and it gives a super polished edge on the tool. We're going to first put a little bit of this compound on it. It comes with the strop. And now I'm just going to turn this tool so that I am sharpening with the bevel. Strop both sides. We'll grab a rag to wipe the compound off of the tool. I can tell you that if you do not clean the tool, that dark compound will transfer to your lighter blanks and uh, it just continues to grow. It's like anti-seize, it just doesn't disappear. Okay, we've got a super sharp edge on this tool. I wanna give you a demonstration of just how sharp this tool is. I'm just gonna basically run it up my arm and look at that, it takes the hair right off my arm. It is razor sharp. Stropping the skew will give you a shiny finish on your tool, and the more you strop it, the shinier and the smoother uh, that tool edge will become. I've chucked up a piece of wood here, and I'd like to go ahead and take a couple of quick cuts uh, just to show you how sharp this skew is. The blank's not completely round yet, but you can see the areas that I am rounding with the skew, just how incredible the cut is. Uh, we'll go just a little bit longer. We'll get this blank trued so we can take a look at uh, how it turns out when it's fully round.
That is a beautiful finish. Take a look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And that's what a sharp skew can do for you. I just want to make a comment. This is not something that you need to do on a very regular basis. Pretty much once you get an edge on your skew and you get it nice and sharp, you generally just need to strop it. And that's what I do when I'm turning. I'll strop before I start turning. Generally, after I get the blank round, I'll go back and strop again. And if the blank is giving me any type of resistance uh, or it's, it's a, a very hard wood or a very hard uh, material, I may strop a couple of times during the turning process. Uh, and generally, if I'm getting close to finishing a pin and I want to take it right down to the bushings, a lot of times I may stop, run it over the strop, just to make that last finishing pass. I don't know if this video will help you or not. I certainly hope there is some information that you can, can take from this video that will help you. But uh, this, is, this is just the way I like to sharpen a skew in my shop. And it works well for me. I've had good luck and I enjoy using the skew on a very regular basis. Thank you for hanging out with me. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.